because I don't want to be exactly the same. Yeah, no yeah, differentiate yourself. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, Minnesota series, my thoughts are much the same as what I shared with you guys after the game on Saturday night. Um, disappointed we couldn't find a way to get points out of that series. I thought uh, we, we played a, a better overall game on Saturday than we did Friday. Uh, Friday, <clears throat> I thought we were, we were in it, but I thought Ed really made a lot of big saves to keep us in it. And uh, Saturday, I, I thought we couldn't, we, we, we didn't make key plays at times that we needed to. And that was the difference. They did. And uh, and the game swung their way. So uh, they're a good team. We knew that. They were pretty much what we expected. And uh, like I said, I'm disappointed we didn't get points out of that series, especially at home. So we don't get an opportunity to see them till the end of the, the season at this stage. Northeastern is a uh, team far better than their record would indicate. You, you look at their record and you're thinking, uh, but I, but I, I, th I think they have uh, they have skill on their team. They they can play with good pace. Um, you know, last year it was this time of year that, from a record standpoint, they were really struggling. They beat us two to one, and they went on on a run and had a great second half. And I think their team's better than than it was at that time last year. So uh, for us, you know, it's a, it's an important game. Uh, obviously, we have finals week this week. It'll be an unusual. Or it'll be a different kind of week of preparation, but uh, come the end of the week, we got to focus on just playing hockey and ending the first half uh, playing well and going into that the break that we have and getting ready for the GLI. So uh, they'll they'll be a very difficult challenge for us. They play they're a hard team to play against. They play fast, and uh, you know we're used to that. So that's what we've seen the whole first half of the season. But it doesn't get any easier. That's for sure. Coach, you mentioned finals week and being at a different type of schedule for your team. <clears throat> Excuse me. What kind of schedule or how does finals week affect your change in practice this week? Well, we look at the schedule. We, we had a number of guys who had finals last week. And, and so that certainly impacted their weeks and, and heading into the weekend. This week, uh, we, didn't, we, we told guys not even come to the rink yesterday. And today, uh, if obviously if there are any scheduling conflicts, guys just don't make it here, which is cool. Uh, that's obviously the priority. Um, but today we'll have we'll have a skate. We'll have a short skate just to get a sweat up, and and I, I think it's it's a good break getting away from the studies. Tomorrow again, we have a number of guys who have exams, so we're not even going to practice tomorrow, and then we'll pretty much have a normal practice schedule Thursday, Friday, and then we'll have a short skate on Saturday too in preparation for because we have an early game on Sunday. So I think preparation-wise, there's there's enough time to get ready to play, but it's all going to be back-loaded because uh, the majority of guys' tests are early in the week, and we want them to have all the time they need to get prepared for those. And also, you mentioned Northeastern's a better team than their record indicates. You could also make the argument that your team's a better record than you'd indicate. And you remember last year when they beat you, they went on a big run. Do you tell your teams, like, hey, same thing can happen this year? And how do you get your team prepared to play a team like Northeastern that, like you said, is better than their record indicates? Yeah, well, I, I don't think our team will have any problem not respecting any of the opponents that we play. And, and, we address it all the time, but um, we're not in a place ourselves not to be respecting our opponents. And I would agree with you. I think our I think our team's better than our our record indicates. And uh, I think the most important part is that we go out and prove it. So we've gained experience with this particular group in the early portion of the season. Uh, now we've got to take that experience and translate that into uh, wins and points when you're in conference play. And uh, I think. When you look at a game like this where it ends kind of the first part of your season before you have a holiday break, you want to leave feeling good. And, uh, you know, we, we were making progress, and this past weekend we let games get away from us. 
you don't feel as good about things. So it's it's an opportunity to get right back at it and, and try to feel good about your game uh, and its growth going into the, the tournament, which uh, is kind of a new start to the second season. So all our focus once we get back to just hockey and, and the, the exam schedules behind us will be on Northeastern. Uh, I'm certain we'll have lots of respect for them. And the challenge is to get our game at a level that, that uh, we play with pace. And, uh, you know, we, we'll give ourselves a chance to win. Tom, you touched this on a little bit on Saturday and all that, but uh, JT Stangline had a goal in each game and had some other looks and all that. When you looked at the review of the, of the video, um, what did you see on his overall game and what does he have to do to be a complete player that you're trying to make him into? He has to play with, he has to play with pace for 60 minutes. And, and if he can pull that together, that gives him a chance to contribute because he's good around the net. He has a good shot. Um, but where he runs into challenges is is getting places, and and uh, and it's not that he's not capable. It's it's more of a mindset to uh, you know not wait for things to happen to go help make things happen. And when he's doing that, even even in the cases where he may make a mistake, much like anybody, you oftentimes can overcome those mistakes when when you're playing with pace and playing with focus and playing with intensity. And so I, I thought he probably did that more consistently this weekend than he has done up until this point this season. He got rewarded a little bit from a goal perspective, you know. Um, so he, he created a number of transition two-on-ones, um, one of which he scored off of. And, um, you know, hopefully he got rewarded because he hit the net. He shot the puck, he hit the net, and that rewarded him, and we need more of that. Uh, and the second goal he got, he went to the net. So, you know, we're talking about uh, we have to become a better team offensively. He can help contribute if he does those things that we're talking about. If you just focus on your point productivity, then then that's the wrong focus. You, you, you don't you don't focus on the work that goes into getting those types of results. And and I think if he or any player gets that confused, that's what happens. You know, and and so hopefully he'll take last weekend's progress in his game because I've told him this in the past. That you can't just be about point productivity. We've got to get a quality of play in your game. If you're going to play, especially with those two guys who play a lot of minutes, you're going to play against good opponents. You're going to play in a lot of situations. We need a quality of game for 200 feet, not just from below the offensive dots. And I think he's working at that. And obviously, if he plays that well, that helps that line become a force, so, and that's what you need, more balance. Helps the line, um, helps our team, provides balance, uh, hopefully provides additional scoring productivity. You know, that line had uh, a few goals on the weekend, which is that is positive. And again, we, we've got to find a way to step up our of offensive productivity, not just in goal output, but even in, in – Creating more meaningful That's scoring true. chance, and yeah, so so you you will get that end result. Same thing. I don't want to focus just on the goals. I want to focus into what gives you the opportunity for goals, and then ultimately you think you'll get those. So we need to do that as a team. Coach, you've uh, been moving your, if I may call it your uh, your underclassmen line up to the top line: Appleton, Kotarenko, and Hirose. How have those guys been handling getting? top minutes and being the top tier offensive unit for you? Well, I think they, they've handled I think they've handled the season well to date. Um, you know, I'm not so sure how much time is spent on really looking at the depth chart from that perspective when you're playing teams. Um, so far, we've had more success when we're not necessarily matching up line for line. Um, and we've had the most success when we're when we're playing four lines. If we can get four lines playing well, and for those guys, I think they've kind of you know gotten their feet under themselves a little bit. They're developing some chemistry and understanding how to play off one another. Um, certainly, as time goes on, uh, other teams may target certain lines. There's being one of them when they play against us, so that forces you to create a higher level of performance because you know you're you're being checked or you're being focused on and you're playing against top lines on other teams so I, I think they're growing I, I think they're growing I think their confidence is growing and I, I like how their chemistry is growing 
Coach, um, Mason Appleton currently leading points, goals, and assists, and then Ed Minnie has four games of over 30 saves. How important has their play been at this time right now, kind of just getting up to that level? R real important for us. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about across the board is developing your game and then developing a consistency in your game. And that starts in practice. And from a coaching perspective, that's where you build trust. When you see somebody do something day in and day out, and everybody's going to have their moments and bad days, but that trust builds when you see a level of consistency. And that's what gets people in the lineup. That's get, what, what gets them more playing time. Um, that's what gets them um, maybe – with certain partners or line combinations, but developing a level of consistency, and I think both of the players that you mentioned have been doing that. You know, Mason, Mason started last year. I thought he had a real good freshman year. I think this time last year he hit the wall maybe a little bit. We might have played him a little too much. He had a very productive off season, and I think his game has been very, very consistent for the most part this season so far, and keeps rising. I think you could say the same for Ed. Uh, he's finding a level of consistency. He's never played this much since he's been here. So that's part of his process to learn how to handle that and to perform on a consistent basis, which he's done pretty much for the past four consecutive games. Okay, and then to Northeastern, both teams coming off a uh, loss. And Northeastern's also uh, winless on the road this season. What are the keys to victory heading into Sunday? Well, we have to play at a high pace. We have to generate more offensive scoring chances for our team. I'm not even going to talk about their team. Um, last year last year against their team, they, they were able to have good zone possession time in our, in our defensive zone that, that, that presented challenges for us. Uh, so we'll have to do a better job defending against them, even though it didn't result in lots of goals, 2-1 uh, loss. Uh, it, it did it did make us chase the puck a lot. And so we have to, we have to be better. We have to, we have to be able to manage the puck better, possess the puck better and create more pressure, whether it's coming up the ice on our rushes in transition or an offensive zone play against Northeastern. They played a real good schedule. They played real good teams. Um, you know, they beat Minnesota recently. They played Boston college, a couple, uh, close games. They've played Notre Dame, couple times so they, they've played a really tough schedule so far so like I said I, I really respect their team and think a lot of them my understand it's the first time they've been here since I played huh wow that's a long time ago I think we had a brawl with their team didn't we back then that's old time hockey their, co their coach was yeah he was on the ice that's right that's right Tom there's what 45 shots on Friday close to 80 over the weekend he faced I'm sure you'd agree that's a few more than you'd like. What do you do to power that down? And then also back to Ed, when he's there able to stop 40 and 30 and 30 like he's done over the last few weeks, what does that do for a guy's confidence, especially when he's new and uh, it looks like he's emerged uh, out of this goalie battle? Yeah, uh, his confidence should be on the rise. I thought he played very consistently. I did think that that turnover that he made costing the goal uh, on Friday night, I, I thought – there was some good that came out of it. I thought, you know, he, he responded, he rebounded, he parked that away. Um, and he didn't really show in, in, in his play that that uh, got him down or frustrated him. So I thought that was real positive, although you'd love to have that turnover back. Um, and from a team's perspective, you know, we, we just don't want to give up that many uh, opportunities. And I didn't think we played – uh, well enough. I thought we were chasing the puck the whole night, Friday night. I just didn't think that uh, we were a step late getting places, um, and that's in every zone, including the defensive zone. Uh, and then we gave them, what, five power play chances, and they're a team that shoots the puck a lot off the power play. So um, when you give up five opportunities to that team, especially if the puck doesn't go in the net and you're going a full two minutes, they generate a lot of scoring chances, a lot, a lot of quality scoring chances and shots uh, and attempts off the power play, and we gave up a lot on Friday night. Looking back at Ed's first start again, I know it was, maybe it's an anomaly, him giving up those six to Lake Superior, but uh, as the upperclassman guy, has he done everything that you'd like to see from an upperclassman to, 
to seize it and, and come out as the guy in that? Very, very much so. I, 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 uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, with the exception of that first first series, and I'm, I'm not singling him out, I'm talking about our whole team, uh, I, I think his game has r really been on the rise. His confidence level has been on the rise. I think what's also important is the, his teammates' confidence in him has been on the rise, as has his coach's confidence in him has been on the rise. So, again, we, we watch really closely every day in practice. So what you've done in the past doesn't matter that much today. Today's a new day. But that body of work goes a long way to building that trust and confidence. And in that position, position where you're playing 60 minutes that's that's really important to to, to gain that trust and confidence and so uh you know again this this particular weekend you'd like to get him some wins so because that also builds confidence and it builds the team's confidence but i thought his quality of play was was darn good and one of the keys you ask your goaltender to do is give you a chance to win and i think he did that both nights What's the update with uh, Carson Gat as far as his possibilities for this week? Carson skated for about 45 minutes at his own pace yesterday. I haven't seen, I didn't see him yesterday, and I haven't seen him yet today. So um, I, I won't get a real good indication until probably later in the week because uh, he'll skate today, probably have a light skate if his schedule permits tomorrow on his own. And then we'll see when we come back to practice on Thursday kind of where he's at. And so it's a little too early to tell right now. Two more things. One is uh, when do you oh, guys – No, no, no. You said last question. <laughs> Are there <laughs> any <said> others? <laughs> when you uh, – when does the team come back for Christmas? Come back on the 26th. 26th. Yeah, so we'll, we'll – uh, Christmas Day. Yeah, not Christmas Day this year. We, we have a shorter break than normal. Yeah. And, and uh, the, the way it works out – We'll have about the same amount of uh, preparation time. So we're going to practice on the evening of the 26th, uh, twice on the 27th, in the morning of the 28th, and then we'll head to Detroit and then play the 29th and 30th. Okay, this is the last quick question. What's your favorite Christmas carol? Promise? Uh, my favorite Christmas carol? Wow. I shouldn't have given you another question. <laughs> Favorite. I thought you would be like snapping. I would. I would. Get I would, this easy. Christmas Carol. Like, what do you consider a Christmas Carol? Like a song that's about Christmas. Oh, any kind of song. Yeah. I, I like uh, Bruce Springsteen's uh, uh, "Santa Claus is Coming to Town." That's, right. that's one. That's right. And then tied with that is uh, Elvis's version of uh, "Blue Blue Christmas." Really? Mm -hmm. That's just a sad song. I don't even know what the lyrics say, but I. <laughs> Well, it's a blue Christmas without you, meaning they're not there or they've gone. Ah, I like the tune. <laughs> you asked me my opinion. Now I you're going to debate my, I'm just my like answers? It's, it's unusual because <laughs> one's bubbly and one is like, you know. Yeah. Well, now that brings up Oh, question. gosh, here we go. <laughs> this will probably be the last one. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Favorite Christmas movie. <laughs> Probably Christmas Vacation, I would say. What other Christmas movies are there? My, 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 my wife has the Hallmark Christmas movies, and they, they're, they're all consecutive. You know what? I, actually, you know what? It wouldn't be Christmas Vacation. I like Home Alone. There you go. Yeah. I, I would say that's that's one. I like I like both Home Alones, one and two, and I, and I do like uh, Christmas Vacation. Christmas story is a good one too. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one too. Hey, let me ask you guys a question. What is my favorite uh, Christmas movie? I don't worry about any of the guys. No, we we have a, we have a darn good uh, a darn good group in that regard. Real diligent, focused. Um, yeah, this, this is this has probably been as low maintenance of an academic group, and, and I haven't had high maintenance at all since I've been here. But th this group is, is has been very good up to now. We'll, we'll see how they perform when the grades come out. But up, you know, week by week, uh, they've been very consistent. Yeah, so I think it's a good group. Yeah, four 
I, I don't know that I would have made the team based on the academic standing <laughs> of, of the group that we have. I don't know yet if we have. We have in the past. I, I'm not sure if we will on this group yet. Too early to tell. Anything else? All right. Don't forget the radio show tonight, guys. Carson? I called him Connor. <laughs>